holiness. Abididos. Hallelujah. Um, I want to thank God um, this afternoon. I feel so humbled. And in fact, I am very, very much humbled to be called upon to um, share with such great and amazing women of God and of your caliber. Um, I want to first of all thank God for this great opportunity. And don't worry, um, some people say I am short. Others say I am cute. Others say I am portable. <laughs> By God's grace, I have been called upon to uh, talk on the topic building personal intimacy with the Lord. And then I have added for maximum impact, looking at the theme for the year. So, Abididos, praise the Lord. And to uh, tackle this um, topic, that is building personal intimacy with the Lord for maximum impact. This song came into being. The Holy Spirit uh, dropped this song in me. Day by day, dear Lord, of these three things I pray to see. Greetings to you from my dear husband. Without him, by God's grace, and without him, I would not have been where I am today, together with the entire family. Hallelujah. So, uh, in tackling this topic, I know, uh, I know we have gone through a lot, and so being very portable and short. I think I have to also act according to my size. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, um, we will first of all look at the meaning of build, building personal intimacy. So, the meaning of build, according to um, Webster's uh, dictionary, it says that to erect or as in a house or bridge, form, construct, depend on or make. And then meaning of personal also means individual, private, of one's own. And then looking at intimacy, that also says um, being familiar, closely acquainted, usually affectionate, or loving personal relationship with another person or group. But this afternoon, we are looking at this intimacy with one person. Praise the Lord. And so we'll say that erecting or depending on or making your own private and familiar, affectionate, loving relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so without uh, complexity, I would say that Intimacy expresses close friendship. Since we don't see the word intimacy in the Bible, the word most akin is fellowship. And the text below talks about fellowship with one another and with God. It's, that is 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John 1, verse 3. It says, we proclaim to you 
what we have seen and heard, so that you may also have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, looking at the pace of the world dynamics, it is very easy to fall prey to apostasy. That is, um, you know, living anyhow you want or double-mindedness. I remember our late apostle, um, Blessed Bonnie of Blessed Memory. He once gave a message and the message was titled, The World is Sinking. The World is Sinking. If we look at our phones with so many things happening on, the other time I saw something called, they said China today, Philippines today, but it wasn't Philippines today, it wasn't China today, it was all lies. And uh, I remember meeting with a friend and she told me that on her birthday, her children said, oh, mommy, please come, uh, come and sit down. Daddy is going to uh, bring you breakfast in bed. And this lady is a fancy woman, us in there. You know, and they wanted just to fake it and then post it on Instagram or uh, the names. You know them more than I do. Yeah. And then they did that, posted it nicely. Her husband serving her tea in bed. As soon as she took one sip, she just put it aside and went for her kinky. Meanwhile, another friend had seen it on Instagram and she was quarreling with her husband. Come and see what your brother Kwekuata has done. Look at what she's doing to the wife. And me, even when you come home, you don't talk to me. You don't do this. But look at what your friend is doing. Meanwhile, it was all faked. May God have mercy upon us. And so looking at the world dynamics today and things that are going on, um, it is very, very difficult to, you know, be in consistence or to be drawn to get uh, close to God because things, so many things are going on that is not real. But we have one God who is real. Hallelujah. And a few simple daily best practices and disciplines will allow us to change our lives and then to be more intimate with God. Hallelujah. And with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Somebody said somewhere that you cannot chew an elephant. Nobody can chew an elephant. But you can only chew it but little by little, in bits, you know, let's say like killing a mosquito. Mosquito is very small. If you are able to kill mosquito every day, you do this and you kill a mosquito, I'm sure you'll be very proud of yourself. You understand? Yes. And so that is what we are going to do as we also rededicate our lives to have that personal intimacy with our Lord. Hallelujah. And so let's just start small. Some of us are in it already. But if you are not, let's just start small. Be consistent. Let's create a routine. And also let's be committed with what we want to do as far as building intimacy is concerned. Hallelujah. The first thing, we, th the, I have um, put three things together as ways to build personal intimacy. And it is all in the song that we sang. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. So to see clearly, love dearly, and then follow very nearly. Hallelujah. In James chapter 4, uh, there are so three ways to um, build personal intimacy. So the first one is to see the Lord more clearly. How do we see the Lord more clearly? In James chapter 4 and verse 8, it says, the word of God says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. 
Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1, going also says that, Listen, my son, to a father's instruction. Pay attention. Gain understanding. I give you sound learning. So do not forsake my teaching. For I, wa I too was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me. He said to me, take hold of me. Hallelujah. Uh, keep my commandments and you will live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Hallelujah. And so for you to see the Lord, I would humbly say that it can start from infancy or it can start from where you have come today. And when I'm talking about uh, starting from infancy, even in our prayers, as uh, when we uh, say the Lord's Prayer, we say our Father who art in heaven. But this time, you don't say our Father. But to build a personal intimacy, you say my Father. Hallelujah. We will not pluralize it, but you personalize it. You say my Father. And so to see more clearly, you have to be nurtured no matter what age you are. But the best age is when you are young. You know, as you are growing up, uh, Sunday school. I remember how I learned the Ten Commandments at Sunday school. Uh -huh. And then reciting Bible verses, you know, understanding who God is. Through, whilst you are young, some of us, we go for excursions. Um, you look at the sea, and then you look at rivers, waterfalls, how all these things are done, tributaries. I remember we lived in Nigeria, and one day, we went to the source of a certain great river in Nigeria. And the, when we got to the source, it was just little, little drops. Just little, little drops. And these drops goes and it becomes a big river. In fact, you, are, you have a great amazement on who God is as far as um, seeing um, who he is. And as children... We are introduced, and that's what Proverbs chapter 4, verse 1 says, uh, verse 1 to 5. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. And so you are a child. Without being a child, it will be very difficult for you to see more clearly. Praise the Lord. And so uh, we see God in these uh, things that we are talking about. Creativity. As our mama Elena was, you know, uh, telling us uh, right now. Things that are around us. You just become creative and you see God's uh, beauty. You know, she was very young and she was studying. She wasn't even a dickness at that time. She was a sister in the church. And then she saw this great opportunity. And she was like, no, let me go little by little. And she started. And today we are seeing clearly, hallelujah, what. Um, she is now doing. And so seeing clearly doesn't just start and then it ends there. It's a gradual process. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Sometimes it's under very difficult conditions, but it all turns out well in the long run. I remember when I was growing up and I was being taught, I, my mother was so hard of, on me, despite the fact that I was an only girl among seven boys. And it got to a time that I thought she wasn't even my mother. She was very, very hard. You work and work and work from morning till evening. And sometimes I would cry. But today, as I stand here, I would, I would bless Lord, the Lord for her. Hallelujah. Because she made me see things more clearly. Praise the Lord. I am not saying that you should go and do that to your daughter. There are ways of doing it which I learned, and now I did it to also my daughters. Praise the Lord. And so in seeing more clearly, these are the things that uh, we uh, go through. In seeing clearly, we draw closer to God in prayer and worship. You know, surrendering your heart 24 hours, whether at home or wherever. Worship. And my husband really likes it when I sing. 
when you are at home and you, you just sing. Sing any songs that comes to you. And we women too, we can sing. Hallelujah. And now who doesn't like singing here? As a woman, we all like singing. But some, some people, they sing to insult. One more, the boy could hear. Aha. It's not that type of singing we are talking about. We want to sing to glorify God. And as you sing, you realize that uh, uh, you, you are getting closer to God. God. God also gets closer to you. Worship songs. And so women, let's sing. Let's say, let's sing. Go. Oh. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So we, we sing in worship. We sing worship songs. By so doing, we draw closer to the Lord. And also, apart from that, sometimes we are on social media, spending time with the family, time at school, you know, wherever we are, even when we are driving. Let's um, allow our minds to stay on the Lord that we serve. Sometimes you may be driving and somebody will come and cross you or do something. And you say, Shania Chirebi, you know, you will open your mouth and say, if you are not careful, you even say the F word. Has it happened to you before? Yeah. But if you wait on the Lord, you know, and you have that intimacy with the Lord, it will be very difficult for you to open your mouth to say something. I remember in seeing clearly, I remember one time I was driving and then um, somebody just stopped in front of me. So I was going past and I would say, oh, brah. It, before I could even say bra, excuse me to say, I'll use the words, the exact words he said. He was like, oh, maybe I first saw her when I win your bida. Oh, my goodness. You know, and so, and if I also have the audacity, I also stand there. I will also say things to her. But that morning, I had prayed. You know, I would not throw my pearls before swines, as the word of God tells us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And so, I did not say anything to him. And then I drove off. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. And so, we have to be very careful. In, and these are things that goes on in our society. Quite recently, even at Nungua Police Station, the, uh, one of the big police officers there also had somebody behave rudely to him. And so, he just took the car number, called other police and then he spoke to them, and then they, as soon as the car got there, they stopped the car and said, come in. He didn't know what was happening. And then, you know, he was taken to the police station. But do you have to wait for such things to happen to you before you see? May God have mercy upon us. And then he was very, very much drilled. I know he will not repeat that again. And so all that we are saying is that if you draw close to God, uh, in prayer, in, in worship, such things will not come your way. Praise the Lord. And uh, from there, we will go to, um, okay, I have a very short uh, testimony about our dear uh, Apostle Kumil Labi uh, at his induction service recently. And then on page 30 of the induction book, he was described as being extraordinary time conscious, well organized and plans ahead. You know, you say that, mommy, we are talking about building personal intimacy with God. Why are you talking about this? Being extraordinary time conscious, well organized and planning ahead. If you don't have these qualities, you can never have a close intimacy with God. You have to plan your time well. And the best time in the morning. Some people also like to do it in the evening. Some people, you know, do it at various times. But we'll talk about the quiet time also later on. And so when we do that, it will really go a long way to help us. Organizing ourselves. And as virtuous ladies, Abididos. Virtuous ladies. If we want to live for Christ on a personal note, we cannot live without organizing ourselves. Organizing ourselves is very, very, very important. Hallelujah. 
And so even uh, sometimes we do our exercise, we do our workouts as we do these days. Maybe you are walking along. You know, you open your eyes and then you see the great things that God does for us all around. Birds that are singing around, flowers, the trees, you know, even uh, PCC here, the things around, it all amazes us on who God is. So now, to love, the second one is to love the Lord more dearly. Love the Lord as your personal savior. Psalm 42 verse 1 and 2. He says, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where can I go and meet with God? Hallelujah. So that is loving God. You know, he pants for his savior all day long. And then the other thing that shows we are loving our God more dearly is that Psalm 119 verse 9 to 11 says, How can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stay away from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Praise the Lord. Individual intimacy with God matters. But it's really, really, really takes a spiritually strong individual to build a strong church. If I am not strong spiritually, if you are not strong spiritually, our church would stagnate. But when each and every one of us is, are very strong in our personal life with God, are very intimate with Jesus Christ, we will see that, Charlie, huh, we will see beyond what we are seeing. Hallelujah. Amen. And so loving the Lord dearly, it requires growth in, Lord, in the Lord. And this cannot be done without the Bible. These days, people find it hard to open the Bible. And it doesn't take much time to open the Bible or to read the Bible. Sometimes, especially in a devotional book, when you read the devotion, you have the ones that we are, we are reading for one year. Sometimes it's three chapters. Now, if you organize yourself very well, you can use just about 10 to 15 minutes to read about three chapters of the Bible. You'll be amazed. Hallelujah. So you sit down and then you read. But three chapters, you, you feel as if it is so difficult. But it's not difficult at all. And so let's start today. Hallelujah. By so doing, we are telling the Lord that we love him. Because God, Jesus is the word. And the word, we see the word in the Bible. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we have to discipline ourselves. Uh -huh. It is that uh, evil one who makes us think that it is so huge, but it is not huge at all. And sometimes some of us, we just look on the phone and then read something on the phone and then we forget and we go. But when you take the Bible, you read. And even if it's on the phone too, you underline certain things that you love, that God speaks to you through it. You see that, Charlie, God has a lot of things for us. And there are so many unsearchable things in the Bible. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Quite recently, I was uh, looking at a video and looking at some of the Chinese Christians. They are one of the strong Christians in the world. And they put them in prison for, you know, uh, whole, even having a Bible. So when somebody gets, when they get the Bible, sometimes they tear a page and then chew and pour. You understand? They will chew the Bible and pour, and then they keep the word in their hearts. Hallelujah. So without a Bible, they have the words in their hearts. And so let's try and memorize um, uh, 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 the, the Bible as well especially during um, our devotion. We, when we were growing up, we had this book entitled Mary Jones and Her Bible. She loved the Bible so much that she had to walk so many miles to get a Bible. That's how she loved her Bible. 
you know, walk so many miles across um, hills, across valleys, across rivers before she got her Bible and she loved it so much. Is that how we treat our Bible these days? Sometimes you just look on the phone and then you leave it somewhere. May God have mercy upon us. Some of us, it is this that helped us to be able to stand. It's, we had this uh, in our scripture union day saying that no Bible, no breakfast. Hallelujah. It helps you to be mindful of God's presence. And this also helps you to really uh, build up. Hallelujah. And so you can also do this at early in the morning at a convenient place. The other time, somebody was telling me that she find the most convenient place at the place of convenience. Hope you understand where the place of convenience is. So she finds it very convenient that she just goes there, sits very quietly, and then she reads her Bible, and she comes out strong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so that is what uh, we have to do. You can just be in, uh, anywhere. Praise the Lord. And we can also have that, after we have prayed, we also have that still small voice whilst you are meditating. You know, God speaks to you like he did to Elijah in the uh, still small voice and God heard him, you know. People may not understand you, but just go ahead and do it. Some of us, we can talk and talk and talk and talk, but we have to learn to also be quiet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As we are getting close to him, we've realized these days that the average person gets about 50 to 100 texts, emails, WhatsApp messages every day. So you ask yourself, how can I get time to also commune with my Lord? If you are not careful, you cannot do it. Together with your children, hey, if you are not careful, you cannot do it. But if you love the Lord, like Mary Jones did, if you understand who he is and what he has done for you, oh, praise the Lord, you will crave for him through his word by reading the Bible during your personal devotions, during your quiet time, the one-year Bible reading, and studying the Bible. Look, you would love it. Praying at odd times, at midnight, in the early hours um, of the morning. Oh, hallelujah. Um, for, for those of you who have heard me speak many times, I always talk about my dear mother-in-law, uh, who has now gone to be uh, with the Lord, Mama Eunice. And she wakes up in the morning. Not that she didn't have children. She has children. She has a, but she organizes herself very well. She had 10 children. But she will organize herself very well by um, 4 a.m. she's up. You know, when you hear the, the noise, where I stay, there is the Muslim, I stay near a Muslim community. And so every morning by 4, 4.30, you hear the uh, noise. Allah, Allah, you hear it. Good. And so once you hear it, I don't even know how you can sleep. But I know there are some people here in this room, they hear that noise, and then they cover their heads again. May the Lord have mercy upon us. Hallelujah. Yes, so if you just hear that noise, or you hear the birds chirping, if you are married, you can just draw a little closer to your husband, give him a peck, and then just get up. Hallelujah. So that he will not say that you have left him. And so this woman will do that and then go pray on her, by herself, prepare breakfast, and then by 5.30, she has finished preparing breakfast too. And then she will now come and wake her children up for them to have morning devotion. Before they come for morning devotion, she has prepared herself already. And this is what my mother-in-law instilled in me. Praise the Lord. Are you doing that to your daughter-in-law? Or are you also relating well with your mother-in-law? May the Lord have mercy upon us. 
And by so doing, God drops songs in her heart. God reveals so many things to her. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. And then she'll be singing songs like, Me do wo ye su Me do wo da a Me do wo ye su Me do wo da And then songs like, As the deer panted for the waters. These days I don't hear that song very well. Yeah, it, but it's so much soul inspiring. And then, uh, all those songs, they go a long way to help us. And it makes God speak to you. You know, it makes God really speak to you. As I, we sat here and I, I watched the, the sea of uh, women sitting here, I remembered something that God did to me. When we came from Australia and we were sent to Kumasi, New Tafu, I knew Tafu people here. I knew Tafu people in the house. Hallelujah. Yeah. And then we went to Kumasi, New Tafu. And then I realized that um, a lot of young people were leaving the church, especially the ladies. They were going to other places. And my heart became very burdened, you know, so... When I wake up like that and I'm praying, I'll be crying that, Lord, what is happening? And, you know, the Lord revealed something to me. I saw that there were a lot of young ladies and they were just running into our gates in the mission house. And they were running and I, had, I was also trying to stop the gates from opening, but they were forcing to enter. And I said, wow, Lord, you know my heart. So what is it? And this was after waiting on the Lord for weeks through fasting and prayer, not wanting these young ladies to leave. Hallelujah. And that was where, by God's grace, we started praying. And I remember one day I went to church and I did not have my hair covered. I did not even plan to go to church without my hair covered. We went to see someone off at the station. And it was getting near to church. So I came to church without my hair covered. My dear sisters, that day when we closed church, no one spoke to me. As the area head's wife, it was only one man called Elder Palance. He was the only person who spoke to me because I did not have a hair gear on. Praise the Lord. But then the Lord strengthened us. Hallelujah. And today, by God's grace, that thing has been uh, kept. And now we have young ladies like you, like you, like you, like you. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. And we are changing the world. Praise the Lord. And so we thank God. But all these things came through prayer, came through personal time with the Lord, uh, weeping before the Lord. Lord, these my women. Lord, and so, uh, uh, you know, some... God, one thing with him too is that he's very humorous. You, let's, let's go on. Hallelujah. The third one is to follow him more nearly. Jeremiah 33 says, Call to me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Talk to him. Cherish him. The nourishing times and the intimacy with you and your God. You know, as you talk to him, he unveils so many things. <clears throat> he unveils so many things to you. And this is not a one-day affair, but it is a continuous thing. Consistency, doing it every day, every day. And we realize that you will start changing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so these are the things that we should really uh, talk about. You know, we follow him very, very, very closely. And when we follow him that way, we become like him and we act like him. We have compassion. When we talk about compassion, uh, I want you to understand compassion is in the tree, they say abadai. Where the baby sleeps in the womb, abadai. 
that is where, uh, when we are talking about compassion. So when you, you go before the Lord that way, you have that compassion. You become, uh, uh, you have humility. You know, you are always, you want to save souls. You want to talk to people. You are very forgiving. You are not selfish. You are generous. Praise the Lord. Uh -huh. And the word actually sanctifies you. You know, as you talk to him, he sanctifies you through his word. Mekra kondo wo Mereshi shawo Mami huo Meni ajina wo Mekra kondo wo Mereshi shawo Mami huo God bless you, Mami. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can go to a quiet and secluded place. That means you are following him. Intimacy in its highest form is experience in quiet and secluded places. Like Mark chapter 6 verse 31. We, intim we develop intimacy when we cultivate being alone with God. It may be in the gardens or a retreat location like PCC. You can come here by yourself. And then in a quietness, you know, God speaks to you. It may be in your room. And Jesus models this for us, as we all know in Luke chapter 5 and verse 16. And then when we are silent before him, when we are silent before him, we also um, do what? Um, hear from him. Praise the Lord. Yeah, when we have that heart-to-heart -heart communication. And Pentecostals, huh, many a time we are loud, and if we are not careful, we will miss this aspect of intimacy with God. May God have mercy upon us. But as we, be, we are quiet before him, listening to him speak to us, he reveals so many things to us. He t tells us about even... He can tell you about work that you should do. Hallelujah. I was just telling um, Mama Vivian about one of my daughters. She's a pharmacist by profession, but she does flowers. Tomorrow, she lives in Australia, and tomorrow there is a wedding. So she will come back from work, and then she will start doing it little by little. She starts about two months before the time, and then she decorates. Then a pharmacist, though, you say, hey, as a pharmacist, she has a lot of money or they have a lot of money. But, you know, doing something extra to add to the um, a, 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 a table. Hallelujah. And so, as you are quiet before the Lord, the Lord reveals so many things to you that you can do. Praise the Lord. Yeah, he reveals so many things that you can do. I remember that most of us have watched the movie War Room, which encourages Christians to cultivate prayer, especially intercessory and warfare. But I think perhaps we could also have intimate room or my personal fellowship room. As we live here, we can also cultivate that. Just where we can be alone, quiet, reflective, and having a heart-to-heart -heart time with the Lord. And the Lord... Look, mark it on the wall. He will reveal so many things to you as we are quiet and we listen to him. Uh, there are so many benefits when we have intimacy or fellowship with the Lord. He opens doors for his power to work supernaturally in our lives. You know, especially for those of us who don't have uh, children of our own. And if you have not adopted any child, then maybe you are craving for a child of your own. I know someone who, for 10 years, she has done all that she needs to do. But in her quietness, God spoke to her, just like he did for Anna. Hallelujah. And then I know people 
whose husbands were not treating them well and so on. But in her quietness, just like Abigail, God answered prayers. Hallelujah. And I know people, very, very, we, we don't have much time uh, on our side. But people like the Deborahs who stood their ground, they were so strong, hallelujah, and they uh, looked up to the Lord, and the Lord did what? He answered their prayers. Praise the Lord. One, the other thing that we have, the benefits, is that we have that inner peace and confidence. You know, sometimes we don't have peace. We are Christians, but we are always running helter-skelter. But even with the little, you don't have to have much to have peace. We know of people who had so much, but they did not have peace. And uh, we know of Lady Diana, eh? a whole future king's wife, but she did not have peace. And so you don't need to have uh, millions of CDs or pounds or dollars to have peace. You know, it is your intimacy with God that gives you peace. Praise the Lord. It also gives you confidence to stand before crowd, to stand before kings, to stand before anywhere that you are put, that God gives you that peace and confidence when you relate well with him. Hallelujah. When you have that intimacy and fellowship with the Lord, it also protects you from false prophets. Praise the Lord. These days, there are lots and lots of false prophets around. And we have to be very, very careful. They are luring us. In the Bible, where it says that they come with clothes like in a, in a sheep's skin, but they are ravenous wolves. May God have mercy upon us. Yeah. You see that, oh, I have this small prayer meeting that we meet here. Come. We have to be very careful as women. If you have that intimacy with God, these are the benefits. It will be very hard for you to go somewhere for prayers. May God have mercy upon us. Other than your own church, your own assembly. But we find ourselves run helter skelter. Hey, this one is here. And then Pentecost women, then we'll be going. You hear this here. I don't think it's happening in this room. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It also helps you to love your neighbors unconditionally. Quarrels, rude and undisciplined behavior. That's one too. It doesn't uh, come your way. It helps you with God's protection. You see that God's protection is always on you. Good, his goodness and mercy is on you. Hallelujah. And then he reveals so many things to you. I remember some time ago... Uh, you know, he becomes your friend. And being a friend, you laugh sometimes with him. You laugh. He's, he, he creates humor in your life. I remember some time ago when we used to live in Australia. And then uh, my car got, had an accident. And then it was time for us to come back to Ghana. This is a very big testimony that... <clears throat> And so we were about to come back to Ghana and we had to leave the children there because of their schooling and so on. And when the car had the accident, there was nothing we could do. And so in order to leave something for the children too, we were wondering, what can we do? And we had to get a place for them to live. And we did not have money. This God, oh, he's so humorous. Give him a clap. Give him a clap. So as I bring my message to an end, this car had an accident. God, being humorous, he had to let the car get an accident. And then that was where I realized the value of insurance. Praise the Lord. The value of insurance. And so our life insurance is in God. Praise the Lord. And so we had, the, they wrote the car off. And then this insurance was paid to us. Oh, hallelujah. It was a very huge sum of money. And so I sat there, I said, you this God, what can I do for you? And then we used that money to get a place for the children, 
we were leaving the mission house. You cannot go with the mission house bed. You cannot go with mission house chairs. So we had to buy everything and leave it for them so that they can also continue their life. So God had to go through an accident. But then you'll be saying that, eh, and God, and this is my car, and I've had an accident. And you will complain and complain. But when you have that peace with God, you just talk to him. And then he reveals himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He also makes you humble. When you have that intimacy with him, he makes you humble. And I can, uh, there are so many people I can think about, but somebody whose life really humbles me is our dear children's director, Professor Ellis. I have never spoken to him before. I have, I have not had any close um, relationship with him before. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But my husband, my dear husband, I don't know if the wife is here. Is Mama Ellis here? Okay, but the wife, uh, my, hus my dear husband told me something about him, that he was a children's movement uh, um, teacher, and he was a professor, and he says he will just be with the children. You know, if it were to be someone who said that, hey, now that I am a professor, oh, I'm stopping, the, I, I don't belong here. But this man humbled himself if he did not have that personal relationship with the Lord, I don't think he would have been able to do that. Praise the Lord. And so that was how this professor went. And it was from there that one of our uh, um, chairmen met him and then said, no, come, I am ordaining you as an elder. But he continued to serve in the children's ministry. Hallelujah. And today... He is our children's director, and we can see the great strides that are happening. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Also, in challenging times, you experience the overcoming spirit that makes you stand firm. In marriage, sometimes you can face difficulties. Sometimes you can have difficult in-laws. You can have uh, difficult children. You can have a, a husband who may not understand you in certain ways. I know of a lady who says that um, her husband does not want her to talk to her parents. The husband is not talking to the girl's parents. The parents who raised your wife for you, and he does not want to talk to them. You understand what I'm saying? So if you are a wife and you have such a husband, what would you do? If you are not careful, it can even lead to a divorce. But this young lady has stood. And even as I speak, she has, she and her husband's, um, you know, picture together on her uh, DP. You know, she did not look at that at all. She said, look, I know the God I'm serving. If you are not talking to my mother, if you are not talking to my father, it's painful. But what does that do to me? It's between you and your God. Let's move on. And so if you don't have that personal intimacy with God, my sisters, you will always grumble and troll. You will keep doing that. And you have a frown face. But those who wait upon the Lord, those who love the Lord, those who have that personal intimacy with the Lord, they are always radiant. Hallelujah. They are the happiest people on earth. It's not that they don't have problems, so, but they are always happy. You will see them. They'll say, hey, as for you, would you, when your papa, you, you don't have problem. They have something there. But because they have that personal intimacy, they are always radiant. I pray that as we live here, we will be radiant. Hallelujah. Let me end with this story. I have planted some things in my house. I love gardening, farming. And I planted some garbage, a cabbage. And this cabbage, I noticed that it wasn't bulging. I said, ah, what is happening? And so somebody came there and I complained. And the person said, ah, 
uh, do you put on the lights when you uh, sleep? I said, no, we don't leave the lights on. But it was then I realized that lights outside, the street light, was shining over my house. And so the cabbage was getting 24 hours of light every day. And so it wasn't bulging. So I had to go to Electricity Corporation to go and tell them to come and change the direction of the light. And now the cabbage started bulging. Hallelujah. What is the essence of this story that I am ending with? Sometimes you need a little darkness. God, you see the wisdom of God. In his infinite wisdom, he provided darkness and light. Hallelujah. And so sometimes the darkness also does us some good. And so if you are facing something, just be with the Lord intimately. He will be with you. He will make you strong. He will make you radiant. He will make you confident. Hallelujah. And you will always, always, always be with him. And so don't complain too much. Don't talk and talk and talk. Just be with him in your closet and you'll be radiant as ever. God bless us all. Amen.